right, so we're back at the bus. It's Saturday. Haven't been putting in a ton of time. It's been difficult with the traveling all the way from Ventura County to Los Angeles County just to work on the bus. So it is quite a bit of a travel, but we're trying to make the most of it. So we're not putting in a full two days on the bus each weekend. We've kind of cut it back to one day and because of the commute and having to run errands before to get all the stuff to get ready for working on the bus, it really ends up being like a three quarter day. So we're doing what we can. Last week on Saturday, we managed to get this guy installed. It's going to be the studs for our back wall. It's pretty sturdy. We have, I believe a one by two rectangular pipe up top. And then we just used a one and three quarter by one and three quarter tube down below. Nothing special with how we picked it. It's just uh, what we had lying around left over from the roof rays and the windows and all the different projects. This was uh, all leftover material, so it worked out pretty well. Uh, welded that in place, made sure everything was square level, went you know step by step, uh, starting with the bottom, then doing a little tack on the bottom of each tube, putting the top on, doing a little tack everywhere there, making sure everything's plumb, so everything was tacked in place, and then went back and welded it all, so it was really sturdy little harder to get everything to square up and be true if you just jump right into welding so that was the process we went through there I did drill just like it in the windows what you'll see when we show you the installation uh, I drilled a one and three quarter inch hole sorry one and three quarter that'd be a huge drill bit <laughs> a three quarter inch hole into the tops of the uh, one and three quarter square tube and then I drilled a small pilot hole inside of that. So this top layer of tube has a large hole through it. The bottom layer of tube has a small hole through it. And I was actually able to take some small screws and go ahead and uh, drive those in. So this, is, this uh, wall is actually connected on either side by being welded into the frame. And then we also have three anchor points in the center. It's very sturdy, really happy with it. So we're going to continue working on the back cap today and hopefully get the major uh, work done on the cap. Lauren has already taken care of the marker lights and patching those up. We've got the wall in. We did paint back here as well. So we sanded and painted everything. We actually used a rust reformer. Really happy with the Rust-Oleum rust reformer. It made sure to sand everything down really well and then coating it with that. Uh, it, it came in a spray can and and giving that two quick coats, it was just a piece of cake. And then coated that with actually a Rust-Oleum primer, even though it didn't really need it. I was doing the rest of it, so I just got kind of spray happy, I guess. And then encoding it with another level of this uh, machine gray enamel that you see. So very happy with the way that all turned out. I do have to replace a little bit of the sheet metal in the back right, because we took that out. It was just too rusted. And in the back left, you'll see that I started cutting out a little piece of the sheet metal. And now it looks bad because there's a little cutout. And you might think, oh, you know, it's not right, everything, whatever, messed up. But it was, uh, what I was really doing was trying to get a gauge for how thick the metal was and also how bad the rust was. So uh, once I cut into it, I realized it was pretty thick sheet metal. It was probably close to a 16 gauge or maybe maybe even a, a 14 gauge. It's pretty thick stuff. So the actual rust that was there was really surface rust and I went back and sanded it all down, painted it, turned out awesome. So what we're gonna do is just take a, a little sheet of the galvanized uh, metal we have left over. I'll cut out a little patch and we'll put the patch down over that. So we do have to take care of those two corners. And then we're gonna actually try to mount the sheet metal to cover the gap from where the roof raise was. We're finally getting to that point. So we have the rivets, we have the VHB tape that we're gonna be using, and the Sika Flex. I got Simpson Strong Ties. And what I'll probably end up doing with these is cutting out this center section. I'm gonna make sure that they're long enough for the application that we need them for. And I'll take the solid center section out, and I'll actually use that to span the gap because there were tabs where the, uh, the back cap 
was riveted down to the bottom portion of the frame before. So this will basically just extend those flanges. Uh, I'm not going to weld it in or anything, I'm just going to rivet in the bottom, rivet in the top, and it will provide a little bit more backing for the section of galvanized sheet metal that we're going to be putting in. So we'll go ahead and start by lining everything up, putting the galvanized sheet metal right in the center and hanging it, and then we'll work our way out from there so that as we approach the corners, we can go ahead and just bend the sheet metal around it. Hopefully that turns out well. This is a, a first for us, um, bending the sheet metal around. Uh, hopefully we don't end up with something that looks too uh, too crappy. Good enough for us, that's all we're going for, so it won't be too bad. So that's what we're gonna be doing with the sheet metal. Lauren's going to be taking my flub and making it into something wonderful. So my flub was uh, all of this uh, one inch insulation that we bought and that's one inch insulation that's not the three quarter inch insulation that we were using is basically useless for the walls and ceiling because we need three quarter and I, I did buy a lot of three quarter but I thought we would be using some one inch in a few locations and turned out we aren't so we have eight sheets of one inch uh, rigid foam board and instead of you know, trying to sell it at a discount or something online or, I don't know, doing something else with it. What we're going to do is uh, just cut it up and use it back here. We're going to start stacking some foam. So, if anything, uh, this is the engine and everything is right below this. It'll give us a little bit of sound deadening, which will be nice and, and definitely needed. Uh, is it the best use of insulation? Not really. <laughs> but... It's about 80 bucks worth of insulation and we don't have anywhere else to put it. So we'll get it off the floor, we'll get it installed, we'll just glue the sheets together and eventually we'll end up with one huge block that's the same contour as the back cap area. And that will really finish up a lot of the major work. We're gonna put a little shelf up here. Lauren's still got a little bit to do on some of the uh, patchwork for the where the marker lights are going. And then we actually have to install those. but. For the most part, this will take care of a lot of the major work, and that means next week we can go back to doing some fun stuff and hanging some more plywood. It's going to be done on the driver's side, we got to finish that wall off, and then in the back where our bedroom will be, we actually still have uh, another one or two pieces of uh, plywood to hang there. So. Hopefully next weekend uh, we'll actually be spending two days out here fingers crossed. We'll try to finish up the driver's side wall and start putting some wood in the ceiling and finish up uh, the last one or two pieces on the passenger side wall. We'll also try to hang our piece of plywood on the wall back here so we have more or less a wood shell. It'll go, we've gone from uh, no shell to sheet metal shell to styrofoam and now we're getting to the point of wood which is really exciting because my opinion is wood is a lot more fun uh, to work with. So my two cents, I can't wait to get to working exclusively with wood again. We will see. Sooner rather than later, hopefully. In other exciting news, we got a new radiator. Uh, it was delivered yesterday to FedEx. We picked it up today, hauled that sucker in. Lauren lifted it single-handedly not really, she watched me lift it, break my back, and rip my shorts, but it's <laughs> okay. It was, a, it was a heavy sucker, but we got that in the bus, got it all wrapped up and protected, and hopefully be installing that soon too. So many things to do and not enough time. When will we get to it all? So stay tuned for that. We'll do a little spiel on the engine and the radiator and that whole install process. So if you like that sort of stuff, well, you got something to look forward to. So, we'll show you how everything turns out today, give you a little uh, view of that. Hopefully it looks better than it does now at the end of the day, we'll see. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. All right, so we have more or less finished up for the day. We're in the back of the bus. You can see our Sika Flex oozing out of all the open holes and the bottom seam here. All in all, 
I feel that it was pretty successful. It actually was a lot easier than I thought. Being that we didn't have experience with this, we didn't know what to expect, but what I will say is choosing the right gauge of metal for the job you're doing is really important. Might go without saying for a lot of you, for those of us like myself who may not always know what we're doing and some of these uh, cases, you know, it's been a first. Uh, it, it, you know, it takes some research, it takes some looking into, nothing compares to experience. Unfortunately, the only way you get experience is by doing it. And sometimes you don't have someone there to show you how. But luckily, we had enough knowledge, enough research into it to pick the right gauge. This is a 20, um, 22 gauge metal that we went with. The reason we went with 22 was because it is thick enough to where it's not going to dent very easy, especially because we have this small span. And it shouldn't oil can because of the small span as well. Oil canning is when it gets those ripples in the, in the metal. Uh, but it is still somewhat malleable. We can still bend it around the edge. That didn't take any sort of effort on our part. All we had to do was slip one end under and then slip the rest of it under and it just naturally formed that edge and it's really solid because when, anytime you have an arch or anything, it's going to be one of the uh, most solid geometric figures other than maybe an X. So even if we back into something, I'm pretty confident we'd only get a little dent. I don't know, but we're not going to test it. So. It's, it, it's really solid, really happy with it. We went with the same 3 16 button head stainless steel rivets that we did on the uh, sides of the bus. Of course, the sides of the bus were 16 gauge, so they were a lot thicker than what we've got back here. But once again, the sides of the bus were just uh, flat. We didn't have to bend the sheet at all. Those would have been almost impossible to bend. You would have had to use some sort of uh, tool and actually have it prefab to put it up, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this. So we made a good call on the metal, thank goodness, and the rivets went in without a problem. We used VHB on the bottom edge, uh, held everything in place while we were messing around with it. Something I never recommend doing, which we did, was uh, I eyeballed all of the rivets on top. So some of them are not exactly level, but that's okay. I'm not going to be upset about it. When we paint and sure? finish everything, we might be able to put a garnish over it or we'll figure something out. You won't really notice it. We'll do a dark paint or something. We'll work it out. Anyhow, really happy we got the back sealed up. So thanks for uh, checking in with us. Uh, we'll show you some updates next week when we start finishing up the interior. We'll give you a quick shot at the end of the video here of the interior as well. Um, so stay tuned for some more updates. We're excited to have our enclosure soon. We're gonna have walls everywhere. First time in months. <laughs> so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.